So now we're going to take a look at our harvest sheet, and this is where we record our harvests. Now you might be looking at this and say, hey, didn't we just look at this? Well, it's because it's basically the exact same format. So let me just open up the Tuesday here. It's a little more uh, slim because there's less information needed here. So the orders are generating a bunch of information, and some of that information is summarized here. So when it comes to harvest time, I can record what I've harvested by unit and by bulk and by tray. So for all these crops, let's just look at radish. I've got this Tuesday, November 3rd harvest, Kaiwari radish. I need to pack, uh, let's actually use sunflower. I need eight small units, eight large units, and I need 270 grams for my mixes, which is my two spicy mixes here, if you remember. They were 270 grams, I need two of them, half is sunflower, half is radish, 270, 270 goes into these two here. So that's what the part of those bulk work. So basically it's showing what I'm expected in each of these. And then I'm going to go through my harvest and package things up, and then I'm going to put in my actual. And theoretically and ideally, it's always going to be the same. It's going to be eight and eight and eight here as well. And same for all these. And I'm going to delete these because I don't want figures going in here because um, this is still a working version. And so most of these units, you know, these are going into, uh, you know, maybe pre-labeled bags or clamshells or something. So you're probably going to have eight, you know, radish labeled clamshells ready to go and you're going to pack eight. And it's going to be as simple as that. You may not. You may just pack four, for example, because somebody cancels four. And then what's going to happen instead of having just 270 uh, grams for your mix, you're going to have more because you're going to have extra plus you might have extra if your yield is larger than you project. You know, there's no way you're ever just going to pack all your, your things, pack your 270 grams and have nothing left. There's always going to be a bit of flux because your, your yield is never going to be exact all the time for any crop. So this allows us to basically just record this stuff. And, you know, once we've done all our packing, everything else gets recorded as bulk, basically. And again, if we're expecting 270, but we're getting a thousand here and we're getting say 800 here well what does that tell us it tells us we're producing extra and we want to produce extra you know having this much extra radish or this much extra sunflower is great it's food for us it's buffer in case something happens maybe this like last minute um this this order for these uh these speckled peas of these radish gets bumped from eight to ten and so you actually need some of this for that now, if that's the case, you should go back to your orders and update that to 10. So this is up to date. Um, but if you forget, that's fine. This is not your invoicing program. So as long as when you drop off 10, you invoice for 10, your invoicing program really is your, your go-to for what your actual figures are. But if you've got it recorded here, there's a whole bunch of data that can be generated relative to your projections. So another thing in here, so basically for each crop, for each harvest, there's one of these and you harvest and you record this. Um, I generally have a sheet that has my crops listed and, and I just write down the numbers like eight small, six medium, five large, you know, 1300 grams extra and I transfer it over later. I've just found over years that's worked easier for us, but there's been periods where we've had a laptop right there and we just go right in and we put it in and it's done. You don't have to worry about it again. Uh, once it's in the laptop, that's it. Uh, sometimes that sheet of paper goes, gets missing. Sometimes it gets wet. Uh, sometimes people don't enter stuff in there. So if you can go to the source, that might be easier. So there are some hidden cells here. And this is for each of these. Now, when I have my expected units, well, there's an equivalent weight there. So I can see here that my small Kaiwari radish is uh, 100 grams because I have eight of them in my expected weight is 800 grams. And then when I put in my actual units here, it's going to fill in that actual actual weight as well. So um, this is hidden, though some people prefer to work in weight and some people prefer to work in units. So if you like to be in weight, you can open it up and take a look at that. Now, you cannot enter the weight and have it fill the units. It, it doesn't make sense to go in that direction, even if that's kind of the way you work. Um, it just weight doesn't translate back the same way. I don't want to get into, get into explaining it now, but if I've packed eight units, they all have 100 grams in there. 
Um, technically, they probably have 105 or 110, to be honest. Um, but yeah, so this is hidden information. Uh, if you want it um, uh, shown, you can, but if not, it's there. So again, what we're trying to do is limit the amount of information that's on the screen, and that's one of the ways to do it. Each of these color codings for a small, medium, large, and trays is consistent throughout the rest of the sheets. And again, with our cell rules, you're only entering data or anything in these green cells. Okay, so that would be here, your date here. Actually, this one you can't. This one should be orange. Okay, I'm just going to edit it right there. Because this one copies, you can see in the upper left there, it copies from our order sheet. We don't want to be putting different things in there. So, yeah, you're just entering in these green areas here. You also want to enter the number of trays you've harvested because what might happen with P, you get your 8P and you've got six large and you only needed eight trays to do that. And so you don't harvest that ninth tray. Well, why not? Well, one is if you don't have a market for that tray, why spend the labor harvesting it? Now you may want to eat it or something else, but you're going to realize over time that if you're overproducing, you have to make a choice, like do I harvest this crop and try to sell it, which is going to take more time? Do I consume it or do I compost it? Ideally, you don't want to be composting anything, but at a certain point, if you've got 70 hours of work to do in a 50-hour work week, that might be your option. So there's no point harvesting a tray if you really don't think you're going to sell it. Uh, another example of this is, and I'm just going to take these off of here, Say you've got like 50 trays worth of sunflower scheduled for the market because you know, your Saturday markets are really big, but the, there's clearly going to be a rain and windstorm that, that, that day. Like there's nothing you can do about that and you are not going to sell 50 trays worth of crop. So you might decide, you know, we're going to harvest 30 and maybe we'll take a few extra live trays just in case, but you know what's going to happen on a rainy day. So you're often making those types of decisions and that's where you might get some difference here. Now, why you want to put that in is because um, I still want to know for those eight trays that I'm sowing and with these values, what my yield is. So we have our expected yield in our crops sheet, but through generating crops and orders and stuff throughout the year, uh, we're going we're gonna to generate an actual yield. And that's going to reflect our very good record keeping and putting in what we've packaged in either specific packages or in bulk and then the number of trays it took to do that. So this is the harvest sheet. This is where you're recording your harvests. You'll spend a decent amount of time here, but it's much simpler uh, than the order sheet, even though it's very much the same layout. Same thing here. It's broken down by the two different days, and I'm just going to, just while we're here, just going to edit these so it's done. Okay, so that's the harvest sheet. Let's take a look at tasks next, which is a super important sheet to keep you organized.